Λοιπόν, κυρίε και κύριοι, καλημέρα και πάλι. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. Indeed, uh, a lot of news has come out uh, from this uh, conference of yours, this annual conference of yours, and now we've got the honor and pleasure of having the Minister of Health here with us. And Mr. Leveris, you do realize you're one of the hottest uh, ministers. Uh, From a news and business point of view, so we'll have the opportunity to discuss uh, health and business. So let's start with um, hot topics, uh, our current topics. Uh, 130 fatalities uh, yesterday, a record. We broke a record once again. Uh, and uh, in view of Christmas, are we expecting any new measures? Anything new with, with regard to measures? Well, first of all, thank you very much for this uh, invitation here today and uh, would be a success, it will be a success of um, any Minister of Health when he is not the most interesting or she's not the most interesting uh, minister in the government. And this is true for all countries around the world. Uh, the fourth uh, wave has uh, reached its peak and it seems that it's, uh, be, it's currently in um, Uh, decline. Uh, unfortunately, on the one hand, uh, we have, it is true, it is very important there is a decrease in the cases because uh, since last week when we had uh, seven to eight, eight, uh, to eight, seven to eight thousand cases, now we are 30% be- lower. Unfortunately, uh, we have got, uh, we're re- reaching the peak uh, in terms of hospitalizations, hospitalized, say, uh, hospitalized patients and deaths. Now, following the decline in the number of cases, there's going to be eventually a decrease in hospitalizations and um, deaths as well. uh, This fourth wave is um, the most challenging one for our country because both the economy, because the economy is uh, open and working, up and running, and therefore the health system, the healthcare system is under a lot of pressure, just like every year. And uh, we also have uh, COVID-19. Now, by the end of next week, we'll have a clearer picture regarding uh, the decrease in uh, hospitalizations and um, deaths. However, we remain vigilant because we have got the Omicron um, uh, mutation, which has not affected us yet. We're currently being affected by the Delta. We have been affected by the Delta mutation. It seems that um, the Omicron uh, mutation is going to take its toll as well. So this is why we're rushing with the vaccination campaign, because this seems uh, The, the, because the, the the third boost um, uh, the the boost um, vaccine seems to uh, be quite protective. Um, now, when uh, we we will have reached 80% percent of um, the adult population, 70% percent, some say the total population by when everybody will have been vaccinated who has already had a, a, an appointment for a vaccine. So it is said that uh, by in in February there was going to be a fifth wave of this pandemic. Are you afraid of the, this is going to happen, or you believe that uh, with increase in the vaccination rate um, we might avoid this fifth wave? Well, obviously the this uh, pandemic uh, has been. Um, taking us by surprise, has been um, surprising us all along. We're expecting the Omicron to deploy, but we've reached the fourth. When we entered the fourth wave, we weren't as, uh, we didn't have as many people vaccinated as we would have liked. And this is um, uh, made obvious by the fact that the fourth wave affects mostly the areas where there, where there were, there has been a low vaccination rate, especially in Northern Greece. And uh, Thessaloniki has been the most difficult. The Thess- Athens uh, has been under a lot of pressure, but because the coverage, the vaccination coverage has been satisfactory, it has been under less pressure in terms of hospitalizations and um, uh, deaths. Now, um, regarding the fifth wave, our response is that uh, we will ho- we will be hopefully in a much better position in terms of vaccinations by mid-January. Uh, um, We believe that by mid mid January, uh, with the first, third, and uh, second uh, and third uh, uh, vaccinations, and as it is clear that it's mostly the non-vaccinated who are mostly affected. 
and by adding the extra measure that uh, Anyone above the age of uh, 60 who has not taken the boost uh, shot uh, will be considered non-vaccinated, will be, will be helped. Um, now, a couple of comments with regard to the current affairs and the, the issue, the, this wave of uh, um, anti-vaccination um, αυτό να το πω πολύ απλά, πολύ λαϊκά. Anti-vaxxers. Is this something uh, you can do can, to persuade them? Or is it uh, something that you can't do anything about? Well, first of all, we have to. There are still there are different types of people who have not been vaccinated. There are those who haven't had the chance yet, and those who don't believe in the vaccines. I will be make it clear when we we vaccinate our children. I don't understand. I can't understand the. the uh, argument of any 70-year-old person who says that he's afraid or she's afraid of being vaccinated. Uh, our health care system is under pressure because of uh, our fellow citizens who are above the age of 70 and have not been vaccinated. And this is why we have uh, taken measures to, that uh, limit uh, their um, uh, activities unless they're vaccinated. Now, people who had uh, a... Uh, ideological aspect to this, well, we as ministry are going to take all measures in order to protect uh, our medical doctors from um, any actions, uh, legal actions taken against them. Uh, I'm not going to um, accept any actions taken by lawyers against uh, do doctors who uh, just do their jobs in terms of vac uh, vaccinations or intubations, um, mechanical uh, ventilation of patients. But uh, any talk about uh, manipulation of ICUs uh, are mostly offensive people who are in the front line of our medical system because there's a very standard procedure. There's a standard procedure that is uh, followed and uh, implemented when it comes to uh, patients admitted into ICUs. Therefore, we're going to protect uh, our uh, doctors and nurses. And when it comes to society, we're not going to tolerate any burning of books or uh, violence uh, against uh, medical staff. Now, I opened this. Uh, I'd, I'd like to pass the floor now to Mr. Pastolopoulos, the president of NNE, um, for an issue that pertains to, to your area as you represent um, the private health care private healthcare system. First of all, I'd like to welcome the minister. He's the only guest who has joined, come to the panel wearing a face mask. Um, so the minister last week in a conference on health care talked about the entire aspect, the entire range of issues pertaining to health care, pharma, private health care system, and we're all happy with his intentions and his positions. Now. What we know in Greece is that good intentions over time have, um, that have been good intentions over time, but uh, to no avail. So my question is the following. What is the timeline for the implementation of everything that you have uh, announced and the qualitative criteria, which is a key point that is going to signal change in the way that uh, the Ministry of Health um, perceives of the private sector, or sees the private sector, and sec to question. The worst problem in both public and private sectors is the availability of uh, nursing staff. And this same problem uh, seems that it will not be easily resolved. So what do you intend to do in order to have more nursing staff, to produce more nursing staff? Thank you very much, President. And now I kindly ask or Mr. Libios Pondriti to join our discussion. He is the president of uh, the um, pharma industry. He's uh, very well aware of the pharma issues uh, from his additional and business um, capacity. And um, I'd like to encourage a discussion between the ministry and uh, the private sector. So, Mr. you answer to this first, and then you, 
Mr. Padmini, do take the floor. The floor. Okay, thank you very much for these questions. We've had a lot of discussions with, regarding the restructuring of the AOP. Let me tell you what we intend to do with AOP. Right now, unfortunately, although it is the key uh, provider for the insured, uh, it, the great criteria is that it uh, has to meet the criteria of healthcare providers. Um, AOP will work on conditions, on terms and conditions of so, of uh, insurance um, companies. So there will be quality standards and who anyone who fails to meet these criteria they will not uh, be contracted with LP yes indeed there are providers who shouldn't be contracted uh, with LP uh, for instance LP might say that uh, they're not going to enter into contract uh, with providers that uh, use uh, old technology or outdated uh, medical equipment so this quality indicator will be introduced and uh, included and it not only avert any uh, contract signing but also providers who will deliver the service, they will uh, get a, a uh, tiered uh, uh, rebate. So depending on the, the quality um, criteria or indicator, uh, they will uh, charge a different amount. Um, now, what does this mean? Because this will be the key reform. It means that in the forthcoming days, I hope that if not within this year, but in the first days of 2022, the bill, which is almost uh, ready, uh, will be announced uh, for public uh, consultation. And uh, in January, the law will be passed. And uh, because the quality criteria is a dynamic process, uh, there will, uh, throughout the half of 2022, uh, they will be applied to uh, providers. So. This is a reform that will be launched in uh, uh, January 1st, 2022, and will be fully applied in the second half of the year. So, Mr. Papandimitriou, I asked Mr. Papandimitriou, uh, I asked him, oh, how are you? He said, oh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite uh, enervated on why. I asked, and he says some news that pertains uh, to his uh, industry. Uh, well, thank you very much. Oh, I will follow what uh, Mr. Minister is doing. I will wear my mask. Uh, let me tell you why I'm angry. Normally, I, I am not angry. I try to keep it under control, but uh, I actually am uh, in despair because uh, of uh, my business. Uh, I am representing uh, the business I work in, and I was able to get a full picture of uh, the uh, mandatory uh, refunds that we called upon to pay and I suddenly come to realize that the sales we actually made to AOP which are at prices regulated by the state based on the two lowest prices of the euro area it was an X amount and 59% of these sales in total must be given back to the state so uh, under these conditions, there is no entrepreneurship. There is no company that can function as a company because if you give back 59%, then we have to cover our cost, uh, products, uh, our overheads. And of course, uh, how can we have a profit? We need to have a profit, uh, at least a, a a small percentage. Uh, so what uh, actually comes out of my mouth, and this is spontaneously, is uh, the uh, there's undervaluation, uh, and we see that the budgets, the public budgets, uh, are stable when it comes uh, to pricing of medicine. Some small moves have been made, but morbidity is high. There's a need for new treatments, and so on and so forth. So is the intention in place? Because uh, the minister knows everything in relation to pharma. So the question is, is our intention to take corrective action because 2021 will be in mourning uh, at the close of year. So from the first meetings we had with the pharma industry, Mr. Papadimitri, you shouldn't be surprised. I had told you the figures that you should expect for the first half of 2021 from the first meeting we had. So we're talking about a clawback and we're talking about in hospital and out of hospital for specific uh, uh, law one uh, drugs uh, that 
total clawback is 1.5 billion without measures being taken. Right now, last week, uh, we took some measures. I'll start uh, in the opposite direction from what was mentioned by Mr. Papadimitri. In order for us to finance the system, we first have to exhaust uh, the structural measures in place. So some of these are applauded by the pharma industry, others bother the pharma industry, but I believe they're in the right direction. You said uh, that uh, prices are based on the prices in the two uh, lowest uh, countries. Uh, you also have a 7% uh, cutoff point, uh, which acts as a protective mechanism. So we have two countries with the lowest prices plus a 7%, which is like the cutoff value. So in some cases, based on the two uh, lowest countries, the price should be lower, but it's not because there's this buffer. So we know that uh, we will have negotiations. So the negotiations will be based on terms where you'll have consumptions from all over Europe, because in Greece, there's a high consumption issue. You talked about under uh, pricing. Uh, you say we accept the uninsured in uh, the uh, public health system. And uh, could you speed up? So uh, you said we take out the uninsured. There was a lot of criticism, and uh, we see that the scandal of uh, prescription is uh, that it went uh, to the uh, social security uh, numbers of uninsured, and this was to the detriment of clawback and rebate. And we also have the protective measures of uh, uh, prescriptions uh, and therapeutic protocols. Uh, these will be implemented uh, in 2022. Sphere's proposals are in the right direction. They need time to be implemented. I believe that the first measures will give us some good results. And I'm certain that when we enter into the discussion of the budget, as you yourself mentioned, in order for us to see whether more money needs to be injected, we have to look at the structural measures and exhaust all these structural measures first. Now, uninsured, you will get money for that. But in order for us to add additional money, I want to be perfectly honest, in order for me to go to the Ministry of Finance, and say that the budget is not enough, uh, it's uh, uh, under uh, the ideal. I first have to exhaust uh, the structural measures. And there's something else I've mentioned to Sphere is that we're carrying out a, a study. We're trying to see which medicines were used for COVID. Uh, this is also important in order for us to take it out of the budget of $2 billion. We're talking about 528 from hospitals. So we are making moves, and I believe that We've got good cooperation with the pharma industry, so we're not trying to carry out uh, exposed solutions, but also a proactive uh, solution. So we have two minutes. Uh, you can ask a question to the minister. So God help you. A spontaneous question that comes to mind. Uh, if uh, one gives back 59%, what remains to be given in negotiations? And I'd like to say that this 59% is determined not because this is uh, the surplus, uh, the average surplus, but because uh, the state decided to see how the clawback is allocated among companies as if it would make it smaller. Clawback does not become smaller like this. Uh, there can only be controls. We need to have stricter regulation. And I think that the recent example that was in the papers shows that if there is a squandering, it's not the farmer's fault because all these years a farmer has the burden of all these uh, surpluses and overruns. There are other things that uh, create uh, demand uh, and they're trying to make use of the loopholes in the system. This is why we said there should be better computerization, being able to find the problems and uh, attack them at their root, try to attack the root causes. So what I would like to ask is the following. Uh, from my side, what are the uh, timetables, the timeline? And I'm talking about uh, the adoption of uh, control mechanisms. We talked about uh, patients' records. We talked about e-invoicing in hospitals, uh, linking uh, diagnostic tests uh, to uh, um, 
the treatment of a disease. Uh, all this is important in order for us to see that uh, the money is properly used. Uh, so when will this happen? What's the timeline? You have 59 seconds trying to condense the answer. So from now, for uninsured, we're looking into it now. Let me inform you that I've already asked uh, from the negotiation committee to look at uh, vitamin D, magnesium, and iron, for which the total cost was 100 million. Some of them can be outside uh, the positive list. Other may have a strict protocol and very limited budget, which means that money will be saved there. The uh, patient uh, electronic records, uh, well, unfortunately, in 2022, you can't have uh, an uh, electronic patient records uh, to control consumption. But prescription in hospitals uh, electronically, the e-patient records and digitization in hospitals, and I believe that from mid-2023, we will have the first visible results. So for 2022, we will upload uh, all these uh, cutoff, uh, if you like, uh, values. And I believe that in 2022, we'll have a more rationalized uh, clawback because there's a commitment on the part of Greece. But I want to commit myself vis-a-vis -vis everybody in the healthcare sector, whereas uh, we have committed to reducing the clawback uh, by 50. This is not my intention. I want it to be much higher. I want uh, this uh, to be rendered sustainable, even though uh, the uh, creditors have a lower, if you like, number. So this is a huge uh, issue. I can't discuss it at length now. Thank you very much uh, to Mr. Papadimitriou. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Plevri. I hope that the Greek pharma industry is on the rebound, that it will make a comeback. And I'd like to say that this government will not accept and will not tolerate the phenomena which uh, make it difficult uh, for the uh, country to address the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of this panel. So the